discuss with you today is that of interplay between the European Court of Justice, the ECJ, and the national constitutional courts. More precisely, as a premise, I will describe very briefly the ways how the courts interplay each other. In the second part, I will focus on the different strategies put in place by the constitutional courts to review the European rules, European law. Then, going to the conclusion of my speech, I will put the question whether the increased resistances of the constitutional court to European law we are witnessing all across Europe are occasional or can be labeled qualified as a science judicial. Uh, I'll give you uh, my paper that topic, but I will try, we will seek with you to reason about the grounds, the reasons underpinning the sort of nationalism, judicial nationalism. Uh, first of all, just um, some preliminary notes about um, the ordinary tool of dialogue between ECJ and the national courts. So the preliminary ruling, as you well know, Article 207 of the EU provides for that the Court of Justice shall have jurisdiction to give preliminary rulings concerning the interpretation of the treaty and the validity and interpretation of any act of institutions, bodies, offices, and agencies of the Union. Well, I have to know the quotation very easily attributed to Benjamin Disraeli or Walter Beige or Mark Twain. There are three kinds of lies. Lies, damned lies, then statistics. So I know that statistics are not the truth. The truth, however, at last at least sometimes figures and statistics can be useful to sum up more complex long reasonings and to show the trend, the tendence. Let's, let's look at the uh, statistics on the preliminary ruling. In 1961 was issued the first, in 1971, these preliminary ruling were 37. In 2018, 568. So the requests for preliminary ruling are increasing. And uh, this shows us that uh, there is uh, the tendency, an increasing tendency for the courts refer to the European Court of Justice for a preliminary ruling. This is the sign of a fruitful dialogue, a fruitful interplay between national courts and European courts, Luxembourg court. But if we look more in depth at these figures, um, we can notice that the national judges are very unlikely are very different one from another. In particular, uh, while the common tribunals, the common courts, are very trustful in these means and they frequently refer to the Luxembourg court, the constitutional courts uh, have been and are reluctant to refer to the uh, to the Luxembourg Court. The Italian court referred for the first time in 2008. The German court still today has referred only three times to the Luxembourg court and the nine constitutional courts of the member state still today, still now, uh, have not engaged in any preliminary reference process. This difference between 
common judges and constitutional courts is hardly surprising. In fact, the common judges are in charge of the daily enforcement of EU law against the incompatible domestic legislation. So they are empowered to disapply the legislation of parliament with huge power. They are, uh, thanks to the direct effect of the European rules envisaging fundamental rights, they can immediately apply this higher level of protection and increase the national standard of protection for those fundamental rights without referring to the Constitutional Court. I'm surprised that uh, their general uh, Euro, -friend, Euro friendliness, they are uh, confident, trustful in the Luxembourg Court. On the contrary, constitutional courts have long been marginal in the process of EU integration. With no surprise, indeed, they are rooted in their national context due to their close relationship with the executive branch, the legislature, the popular opinion, the national cultural heritage. So, no surprise that they have long been reluctant to, to engage in a fruitful dialogue with the, the European Court of Justice. And this reluctance of constitutional courts is, uh, is also present in uh, in the way I accept the supremacy of EU law, the general attitude of the European Court of Justice is expressed, well expressed, in a famous judgment, Internationale Handelsgesellschaft, a case dated 1970. In uh, this important judgment, the ECJ stated that the validity of a community measure or its effect within a member state cannot be affected by allegations that it runs counter to fundamental rights, even then formulated by the constitution of states. This is the monistic reading of the relationship between EU legal order, member states legal order, that uh, always characterized the European Court of Justice. But the constitutional course of uh, some member states, of uh, the large majority of the member states, never accepted such, such an absolute understanding of the primacy of EU law. In particular, they developed four major doctrine, doctrines for major justification uh, to justify the claim for constitutional courts to review EU law. These four doctrines can be um, summed up in four terms. What the counter limits doctrine, two, the fundamental right, three, the ultra vires. We are waiting, so we say ultra virus, not ultra virus, but the doctrine of the competence beyond the scope for the constitutional identity doctrine. As for the first, as you know, the counter limits doctrine was um, elaborated and uh, developed by the Italian Constitutional Court uh, in the famous Frontini case, uh, judgment number 183973. What was the main statement of this important ruling? The limitation of sovereignty there are pointed out in the Treaty of Rome 
cannot entail for the organs of the European Union the power to violate the fundamental principle of the constitutional or the inviolable rights of the human person. So the supremacy of EU law does not from an autonomous international source of law, the government is rooted in a specific authorization in the national constitutional law. This means that the national constitution both authorizes and imposes a limit to the limitation of sovereignty. Hence, the definition counter limit, a limit to a limitation. And uh, this counter limits doctrine, originally conceived by the Italian Constitutional Court, was uh, followed by, uh, by the, the German Court, by the German Court, the German Constitutional Court. Uh, and uh, it uh, resonate, resonates in other constitutional uh, uh, courts in the case law of other, of other constitutional courts, for example, of the France, Belgium, of uh, the Czech Republic, and also of Spain. In uh, each of these different case law, in each of different uh, courts, we can, uh, um, can uh, look at different wordings to express the same concept. The concept that the supreme prince of the constitutional order, the constitutional identity, the principles or fundamental rights of the constitution are beyond the reach of uh, the European integration of uh, the constitutional element and the Treaty of Rome. It, uh, it's very difficult to define the counter limits. Uh, and uh, it is not uh, surprising because uh, the constitutional courts use, use a very uh, generic and big notion to allow itself the greatest possible discretion in defining case by case what can resist EU law and what cannot resist. So what are precisely counter limits is difficult to understand and um, to previously assess. Uh, but uh, if we look at the, the, the case law of the um, German Constitutional Court, maybe uh, we can have uh, a more detailed uh, de definition of uh, this general limit to EU legislation. For example, since the Zolange Heinz decision 1974, uh, the court, uh, the German court, felt that uh, it would carry out a review of EU law as long as, this is the translation of the German word Zolange, it did not contain a catalog of fundamental rights essentially equivalent to that provided for by German constitution. With the, this statement, the fundamental rights review of uh, the European law, of the European uh, rules, has been uh, uh, founded as being grounded. As a result, the German court claims the power to disapply EU law infringing fundamental rights. But uh, uh, 10 years later, 12 years later, developing the fundamental rights review, the same Bundesverfassungsgericht, the same German constitutional court in the decision Zolange II, Zolange Spy, 1986, uh, stated that uh, the requirement of Zolange I were fulfilled. So the 
question of fundamental rights in European law was deemed essentially equivalent to that under the German constitution. As long as EU law ensures this standard of protection, this is the statement, the German court will not review EU law. Going uh, along the, over the years, in the uh, following decision, Banana Mark 2000, uh, the German court made it clear that claims against EU legal acts were inadmissible if they did not demonstrate that the, the general standard of uh, fundamental rights protection was, was fallen below an adequate level. And in the uh, following decision, European Arses Warren case 2005, Honeywell judgment 2010, the um, German court recognizes the primary role of the ECJ in the, the fundamental rights protection and uh, generally um, stated that uh, the, the assessment on whether EU law complies or not with fundamental rights must be carried out not for single EU legal acts but in general. A different perspective, different kind of review is the well-known Ultra Virus review, uh, which is dated at uh, Maastricht case 1993. According to the general review, kind of review, uh, the court, the constitutional court, the German court, has the power to assess whether EU institutions are acting in their jurisdiction as encompassed in the principle of conferral of competencies provided for by Article 5 of the Treaty. Uh, the yes. review was developed in Honeywell ruling when the court stated that it would refer a preliminary ruling to the ECJ before their um, before declaring a European rule uh, the virus, virus and coming to the very recent uh, very recent decision in PSPP ruling 2020 in the famous decision of the about um, operations of uh, the uh, European Central Bank the purchase program of the European Central Bank for the first time ever, the EU law was declared as ultra virus and deemed declared inapplicable in Germany. Uh, thanks to this, uh, due to this ultra virus review. Finally, just to give a sketch of the different schemes. Of a, a different test of a, a review to which uh, the European legislation can be submitted by constitutional courts. And we have to look at the identity review. Identity review, identities controller, uh, engaged in uh, for the first time in uh, the German constitutional court decision list. Lisbon of Thai, Lisbon ruling 2009. Well, in this decision, the court held that the German parliament agreed for the transfer of sovereignty to the EU, but the choice to leave powers, to transfer powers to the EU is limited by the constitutional identity of the German state. Uh, on this ground, this background is possible to check the European law 
um, in compliance with identity principles of the Ingao Bailer OMT judgment 2016 was uh, uh, repeated the scrutiny of ECB operations on the operations carried out by the, the European Central Bank. Well, different notions, counter limits, identity review, ultra virus review, different notions which uh, express uh, the same claim. The claim for the constitutional courts to review European law by limiting the primacy, the supremacy of uh, the uh, of the European law. This is a general framework, a well-known framework, but in my opinion, in the last 15 years, there is something new. The clashes between EU and constitutional law are not so rare as they should. Uh, if we look at, at uh, the case law of the constitutional courts, they generally describe the scenario of a clash between EU constitutional order, domestic order, as a bad trend, unlikely or utterly unlikely. Difficult to conceive, quoting the Spanish Constitutional Court in the decision number one, 2004, for exceptional, quoting the Czech Constitutional Court decision 2006. But if you look at the counter-limit in action, what uh, was considered unlikely is now uh, relatively frequent. If you look at the Constitutional Court of Poland, the decision uh, on uh, the European Parliament, the Constitutional Court of the Czech Republic of, uh, uh, on uh, the same team, uh, on, on the same sub where it applied an ultra virus review, and uh, the Tribunal Constitutional of Portugal, the decision uh, concerning the salaries wages of uh, public uh, servants. The uh, Tribunal Constitutional of Spain in the decision Tony. The Italian Constitutional Court in Tarico case, the first application ever of the country limits. We are we are forced to conclude that these clashes are becoming very frequent. And I would like to uh, give you some sketches on uh, the reasons underpinning this increasing clash, this increasing fight, and uh, um, to, to illustrate also the new strategies, the new judicial strategies uh, of which the courts that the courts are using uh, to, um, to deepen the uh, review EU legislation. Uh, not only the old schemes of the counter limits or uh, ultra virus, but also new, specifically new. Um, judicial strategies. Uh, what I'm uh, referring to, uh, fundamentally uh, two uh, judicial instruments. Tools. The first, the preliminary ruling used as a tool to warn the European uh, court about the application of constitution Counter limits. This is what happened in the Tarico case. I will uh, spend some words. Second 
uh, strategy. The acknowledgement of the priority of the question of constitutionality over the preliminary ruling. Uh, France, Austria, and very recently also Italy have decided to give priority to the question of constitutionality over the preliminary ruling uh, to the Luxembourg Court. First of all, what I mean when uh, I say that the preliminary ruling uh, is used as an early warning before the application of uh, limits or, uh, or an ultra virus review. Uh, the warning can be um, summed up in those uh, quotations, in, in, in those for this formula. Either the ECJ confirms the interpretation given by the Constitutional Court to a EU rule, or the Constitutional Court, this is the menace, this is the warning, will apply the counter limits doctrine and will declare the EU law inapplicable within the national legal order. This is the strategy surrounding Gauweiler OMT judgment of the Constitutional Court. Gauweiler referring to the, to the uh, European Court of Justice by the German Constitutional Court. This is also the uh, scheme, the construction, the argumentative construction of the Tarico case by the Italian Constitutional Court. Is that a dialogue or an ultimatum? Is that a typical use of uh, uh, the function of, uh, of the preliminary ruling uh, or not? Some uh, scholars said that mm, this is not a conventional use of the preliminary ruling. Usually, the preliminary ruling uh, should serve to ask for interpretation. So to make, make it clear for the referring court what is not clear, uh, without mm, casting in supremacy, the monopoly of uh, the European Court of Justice in the interpretation of treaty and of European law in general. But uh, as we see, as we we can see in Rico case and on uh, Gao Weiler. Mm. The of the preliminary ruling covers the substance of an ultimatum, an ultimatum, warning, and menace. Either you change Luxembourg Court your interpretation, or the Constitutional Court will declare EU law enough. In the national, in the national league order. So, uh, this is a new, um, new field in play between uh, constitutional court and Luxembourg. For long, a long time, Ita the Italian constitutional court, the German constitutional court, uh, did not refer to. The Luxembourg Court for a preliminary. Now they seem to have uh, overcome this position, but not necessarily uh, in uh, with the aim of uh, dialoguing, or with the aim uh, of uh, playing with the court, but in some cases. Uh, the aim of uh, imposing the national interpretation of a fundamental right, uh, of a fundamental principle. The second important processual strategy to limit the primacy of EU law, and in particular, to hinder uh, 
the direct interpret the direct effect of uh, the charter of fundamental rights is the priority of the question of constitutionality over the preliminary ruling what's the main problem the general problem what happens when the same legal national provision appears at the same time as uh, incompatible with the constitution and with the european law we say there is the a question of double non-compliance to connect it those separated questions should be assessed by different judges one from the constitutional judge who is competent uh, to decide on the compliance with the constitution another separated but connected question by the uh, court of justice who is uh, competent to decide on the compliance with the charter of fundamental rights what happens in uh, in this case when a question of constitutionality and uh, a european question exists which of the two questions should be addressed first the constitutional or the european one well in all the united states the European question, meaning the question of compatibility of uh, the national domestic legislation with uh, the European one, must be raised first. Uh, it means procedurally that the common tribunal, the common court, the common judge must suspend the judgment, refer to Luxembourg court for a preliminary ruling, and only after the ECJ's ruling, uh, bring the question of uh, constitutionality before the National Constitutional Court, eventually, possibly, bring because uh, the resolution of the preliminary rule, ruling could uh, even uh, solve the question at all, with no mm, need to refer to this priority, this general priority recognized to the European Court over the national one, has uh, three exceptions France, uh, Austria, and Italy. In France, the question prioritaire uh, is uh, provided for uh, Article 61 62. Of the constitution amended in 2008 uh, in austria there is not a legal source for that property but uh, it, it uh, has been uh, acknowledged and recognized uh, by the courts is praetorial in particular austrian constitutional court uh, uh, stated in 2012 that the constitutional court only instance calling to rule on violation of rights through general norms and uh, uh, in that occasion the austrian verfassungsgerichtshof pointed out that uh, if the constitutional court were not the authority to rule on rights as those contained in the charter it would contradict it would counter the notion of a centralized constitutional jurisdiction so the constitutional courts when uh, fundamental rights at stake which are simultaneous protected by the constitution and by wants to speak first wants to decide first um, prioritizing the question of constitutional over the preliminary ruling in Italy Italy um, just uh, 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 just uh, one minute back 
this uh, uh, French and Austrian constitutional priority was uh, deemed compatible with Article 167 in the famous decision Melki and Abdeli for France, a decision of the Luxembourg Court, uh, April 2010, and uh, as for the Austrian case, XT Wiley versus Austria, a decision uh, in, uh, 2018. In both these cases, uh, the European Court recognized that uh, Article 267 does not preclude the priority of constitutionality questions over preliminary rules, but after two conditions. First, that the national courts remain free to refer to the Court of Justice for preliminary rules at whatever stage, stage of the proceedings and uh, are equally free uh, to refer any question which they consider necessary. Second condition, that uh, the national judge shall and must remain free to adopt, adopt any measure necessary to ensure the direct application, so even a provisional judicial protection of the rights conferred under the European legal order. These are the conditions on which is uh, submitted the priority the priority constitutional, the priority of the question of constitutionality. Well, in Italy, the general rule always applied up until 2017 was the priority of the referral to the ECJ over the constitutional review. But this rule uh, has been changed in a, an important judgment, a seminal judgment. The decision 169 of uh, 17. In this uh, important decision, the Italian Constitutional Court held that the Charter of Rights, the Charter of Fundamental Rights, is part of the Union Law, undoubtedly, with uh, a distinct character. It is, it shows, encompasses typically constitutional content. So the court recognized the axiological content, the charter, and qualified the charter as a constitution at the same level of the Italian Constitution. This means when the principles and rights envisaged in the Charter overlap principles and rights safeguarded by the Italian Constitution, in these cases of double violation of the human rights defended safeguard both in the Italian Constitution and in the Charter, the court said that the Constitutional Court want to judge first. Want to judge in light of the internal parameters and possibly an eventual of the European one. So that the first word was to recognize, is to recognize, recognize to the constitutional court, not only because actual in question is grounded on the Italian constitution, but even because the court wants to participate to, to 
construction of a, a common constitutional tradition. So want to ensure that the rights guaranteed by the Charter are in harmony with the constitutional traditions referred to in Article 6 of the TPU sources. This decision was uh, severely criticized by uh, international and community scholar uh, experts in the European because they thought mm, with with some reason it uh, it became well due to this new uh, wave of the constitutional court that uh, the uh, European Court of Justice uh, will would be sidelined, would be postponed by uh, the internal judges. They thought that were not respected the condition posed in Melki and Abdeli case for France and in above mentioned case for Austria. So they thought that uh, the court were infringing EU law and impairing the effect the effectiveness of uh, Article 267, the effect of the preliminary ruling. The reaction of the EC to uh, ruling 269 of the Constitution soon, uh, 20 days after uh, the 269, the EC uh, all the um, ruled in a global standard case that uh, the effect in the effectiveness of uh, the preliminary ruling were precluded from referring questions to the court for a preliminary ruling of immediately applying EU law as a result of uh, a procedure for review of constitutionality. So uh, the ECJ, the, Lux the Luxembourg Court, is uh, for to the Italian constitutional court and uh, quoting another, another uh, part of this text of this. Uh, uh, this uh, of this uh, ruling, the same, the ECJ specifically said, said that uh, the uh, national court, the supreme national court, the supreme, the court against whose decision there is no judicial rem remedy, is required, is obliged to refer the question for a preliminary ruling the interpretation of EU law, even if the constitutional court of the member state concerned, or the Italian constitutional court, has assessed priority of uh, the constitutionality review over preliminary ruling. This uh, uh, clash between the new wave of the Italian case law about preliminary ruling and review of constitutionality was uh, aided, was erased in the following decision now, when 2019. So Italian court replied to the Court of Justice uh, specifying that the priority of uh, the question of constitutionality is not an obligation for the judge, 
an opportunity. So the judge, the common judge, uh, has not the duty to refer first to the court, then and eventually to the European Court of Justice, but as the opportunity to choose what uh, it considers um, more appropriate for the case, whether it is appropriate to go first to the Italian domestic court or to the Lux. However, uh, moreover, the Constitutional Court uh, in this uh, uh, important judgment number 20 to 19 pointed out that uh, it is uh, necessary to consider the peculiarity of the situation where uh, the same legislative rule affects fundamental human rights, both protected in uh, the Charter and in the Constitution. But all this without prejudice to the principles of primacy and direct effect of the law of the European Union. We can say that with this mm, decision, following the C number 63,019 and uh, 117 to 2019, the Constitutional Court, the Italian Constitutional Court, uh, complied with the global standard case in the, with the case law of uh, the Luxembourg Court about preliminary ruling and uh, the condition upon which the priority of uh, the uh, question of constitutionality over the preliminary ruling can be assessed. Coming to these days, uh, so these recent days, uh, it is uh, important to, um, to highlight the decision of the, uh, on the PSE uh, purchase program uh, of the European Central Bank by the German Constitution. Because for, uh, as you know, on May 2020, May 5, uh, the German Constitutional Court replied to uh, the decision of the compiler of uh, the ECJ uh, and uh, finally decided that uh, the decision of the Luxembourg Court violates the principle of proportionality. And uh, um, the Luxembourg Court, this is the assumption of the uh, Bundesverfassung, exercised too soft a proportionality review on the ECB's decision and gave an arbitrary interpretation of the treaties so that the judgment of the Luxembourg court was to be considered ultra vires and uh, was uh, consequently declared non-binding in Germany. This is the first case uh, when uh, the court refuses to, uh, to apply and to implement an ECJ preliminary ruling not by assuming a contrast with its own constitution. This is uh, the general rule for the counter limits review, the fundamental rights review, and so on. In this case, uh, the question is uh, more worrying, uh, and we have to be concerned about that because the German court uh, claims the power to give uh, an interpretation of the European rules, of the European schemes, of the European test, uh, judicial test, the proportionality. 
So my final question is going very, very fast to my conclusion. Is it fair in light of the different forms of resistances, the Czech Republic, the Polish Republic, the Portuguese, the, the Czech court, the, the Polish court, the Portuguese court, the German court, we, with such a strong and very tough decision, is it fair to speak of a, a general search all across Europe of uh, judicial nationalism? What are the um, reasons underpinning this judicial nationalism? Is it uh, all uh, to be considered as a, an attempt of uh, destroying the doctrine of uh, the primacy of EU law? Uh, are these are those expressions of uh, power um, which cast out the competencies of the ECJ and uh, Goes goes along the the path of the disobedience instead of the cooperation, the loyal cooperation. Or is it possible to to go um, beyond and uh, to try to understand what are the reasons for a constructive judicial nationalism, for a uh, judicial nationalism aimed at Restore connection between rights and the national political process, between rights and the process of democracy. Is it uh, uh, is it is, is it possible to understand Tariko case or uh, the um, case law about uh, the priority? Of the constitutionality as uh, the attempt to um, to go toward a bottom up creation, creation interpretation of uh, fundamental rights using the constitutional traditions as building blocks of a new understanding of uh, human rights that uh, are more balanced between uh, libertarian and communitarian readings. Is it uh, possible to, to separate judicial nationalism, which confines, which ended up in uh, populism, and judicial nationalism is a uh, city, mm, the attempt complete the constitutionalization of Europe and to to inflate democracy principles and an understanding a communitarian common understanding of human rights in Europe I don't know if I'm able to, to address this question I'd like to to discuss about it thank you so much